Last Wednesday night in Charleston, South Carolina, a 21-year-old white man stepped into a historic African Methodist Episcopal Church, pulled out a gun, and declared his intent to start a race war. He then proceeded to kill nine African American church members. Racial hate crimes like these expose deep wounds diabolically woven into the very fabric of our nation. Right now, the eyes of the world are on Charleston, and billions are wondering why. Why the hatred, injustice, racism, and why death? Virtually everyone shares this gut sense that it's not the way it's supposed to be. And according to the Bible, they're exactly right. See, the Bible opens up with God's intent for humanity in Genesis 1, a planet full of God's human kids who would partner with him in ruling, reproducing, creating culture, and stewarding the earth in full relationship with God and one another. But in Genesis 3, we decide to rebel from God and create a world on our own terms. This broken partnership is what the Bible calls sin, and it's exactly why we're stuck in this world of hatred, injustice, racism, and death. And the story of Genesis 3 through 11 shows us it's not just a couple people who have chosen to rebel, it's everyone. Uh, but God is so relentlessly good and loving, he refuses to give up on humanity. So what God does is select a small group of people out of the many, and that's Israel in the Bible, and he makes a covenant partnership with them. This is a covenant, and God promises to bless Israel, make them a great nation, give them lots of land to flourish, and in exchange, God asks his covenant partners to trust and obey him and keep their eyes open for God's Messiah. And the purpose of all of this is to somehow use this covenant relationship to renew his partnership with everyone else on the planet. But here's what happens. Israel breaks the covenant. They worship other gods. Uh, they allow horrible injustice. So they lose their land and they're forced off into exile. And everything seems hopeless. But during this dark time in Israel's history, Israel's prophets remind them that God will be faithful in spite of Israel's faithlessness and failure somehow. And they call this the new covenant. And this is what's so interesting about Jesus. Jesus is introduced to the story of the Bible as the faithful Israelite who fulfills Israel's side of the bargain. Jesus obeys God fully. Jesus is even the last in a long line of Israel's rightful kings. And get this, it turns out Jesus is actually the God of the Old Testament in human form. So Jesus, this God become human, has become that faithful covenant partner that we were all made to be way back in Genesis 1. The eyewitness accounts of Jesus' life are called Gospels. And they tell us the story of how Jesus was faithful all the way to his execution on a Roman cross. The New Testament writers tell us that when Jesus died on that cross, he effectively bore our sins into himself and then into the grave. But thankfully, the story doesn't end there. God raised Jesus from dead. 500 people saw it firsthand. And Jesus' resurrection validates everything about him, including his power over sin and death forever. And now, through Jesus, God has opened up a way for anyone to be in a renewed partnership with him. And now, Jesus calls all people from every race, every culture and lifestyle to follow him and be part of his new covenant family. And nobody in this family is perfect, but despite our daily failures, Jesus is committed to making us into partners who are becoming more faithful by the power of his Holy Spirit for us. The story of the Bible ends with a vision of a fully renewed world, no more hatred, injustice, racism, or death, just goodness and peace, and King Jesus is in the middle of it all. And there's this renewed humanity there full of diversity and beauty, partnering together with God to expand his brand of goodness for his creation into eternity. And so the end of the Bible story is really a, a new beginning for all who believe in and follow Jesus as Lord. And this is the good news of the gospel. If you turn away from your sin and rebellion today and turn toward Jesus in faith that he's exactly who the Bible says he is, that future vision of, re, of a renewed worldwide family that's your future. That's our future.